It's Bitcoin going to see its price drop to around 20 to the 25K range starting on July 13th. According to JP Morgan Ellis, that is exactly what's going to happen. On this episode of Crypto Talk Tuesday, we're going to look into why JP Morgan is making this bull price prediction and whether or not Bitcoin and crypto scholar and cryptocurrency investors as a whole should be worried. Let's get scholared. Welcome to another episode of Crypto Talk Tuesday. I'm your host, Mario Johnson, president of Crypto Scholars LLC. And today we have a special hurricane edition. Um, I don't know well, you guys don't know. Most of you guys don't know where I'm from, but I'm actually in Florida and we're currently undergoing a bit of a hurricane. Um, what was it? Hurricane Elsa, I think is what it's called. Uh, give you guys a quick little radar view of what we got going on here. So, um, unlike the last, um, situation where we got delayed due to an extremely bad, uh, storm this time, we're going to ride it out. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to ride out our hurricane, um, and, and continue on with our crypto talk, because I think this information is very important and I really want to make sure that you guys are aware of what's going on or what potentially could go on. I'll say it that way. So. As with always, uh, before we get started, I got to do my favorite thing of the uh, of all time. Let's get this disclaimer out of the way. Uh, the information contained herein is for informational and or educational purposes only. Nothing shall be construed to be financial, legal, or tax advice. The content of this video is solely the opinion of myself, the speaker, who is not a financial license advisor, I'm sorry, who is not a licensed financial advisor or registered investment advisor. Trading cryptocurrencies possess a considerable risk of loss. Please understand that neither myself nor Crypto Scholars LLC will ever guarantee any uh, particular outcome. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about this. Because this is something that um, was brought to my attention uh, because I wasn't aware of it. And I have to thank uh, Crypto Lark, Lark Davis, for actually sharing it um, today. And, um, you know, I, I was going to do a totally different topic, but once I got wind of this information, I was like, you know, we got to, I got to run with this. I got to make you guys aware of what's going on. So do we have the potential for Bitcoin's price to drop down to the 25K range? Do we have that potential? There's a few things that I want to bring up and I'm going to uh, go to the chart here in a second um, because I want you guys to see uh, one of the things that we had, I have been looking at that could potentially not even because of this particular issue, um, that I'm going to talk to you guys about before, but due to something on the monthly that I hadn't noticed that could also bring us to, uh, back to that 25 K range. And I want to, I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. So looking at the Bitcoin chart, um, you'll notice we have different colors for different candles. You know, of course, green candles are moving to the upside. Red candles are not necessarily moving to the upside. Um, we call these vector candles based on the, uh, the particular, um, uh, script that I have loaded in trading view. Now, one thing that's really important that we must pay attention to is the fact that these vector candles at some point have to be reclaimed on the monthly chart. Now, when we look at the, the daily chart, we look at the um, hourly chart, uh, the candles get reclaimed by the what, what we refer to as the market maker, the composite man. So uh, if you'll look at where we've currently reclaimed this candle, as you can see, uh, when we had our first dip and we're in the process of moving down here, the bottom of this candle here puts us in that $25,000 range. So could this also be something that uh, potentially, you know, uh, is an opportunity for the market maker to reclaim the liquidity that's, um, uh, that remains within this candle, within this vector candle on the monthly outlook? I don't know, I'm not gonna go there. Um, I'm not gonna go too far down that rabbit hole. Again, something I just wanted to bring to you guys' attention prior to this rabbit hole that I decided to go down, um, which is related to an article that was put out actually on June 25th of this month by uh, JP Morgan, um, indicating that 
the Bitcoin price could go lower than it, the dip that it actually had. Um, what was that? Uh, April, the beginning of June, the end of April, beginning of June, when it was, you know, it saw a 64,000 uh, peak. And then, you know, we called it the Wyckoff uh, distribution pattern playing out where we saw a huge drop off. Well, now we have a situation where, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, um, uh, Grayscale, but Grayscale is a huge uh, investment firm, uh, and they're, I think they're uh, under the arm of Fidelity. I think they're an investment arm of Fidelity that manages that deals in cryptocurrencies, and their current assets under management is massive. Um, now, what they do is they allow high net value or high net worth uh, individuals as well as other institutions to invest into what's known as their uh, GBTC uh, trust, the Grayscale uh, Bitcoin trust. And in order to invest into this, it comes with a uh, six month lockup period. So uh, one of the largest, um, one of the largest uh, investments into this um, trust, into the into Grayscale's Bitcoin trust was actually made, uh, uh, what was it, uh, January, uh, in, in January, if I'm not mistaken, which um, I think the between, you know, I'm kind of bouncing around here, but I want to make sure I give you the information as, 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 as accurately as I can. Uh, evidently, between January 13th, I mean, I'm sorry, July 13th and July 19th, um, these lockup periods of the largest um, investment in the trust are actually going to be released. They're going to be unlocked. So you're looking at somewhere to the tune of a little over 41,000 um, shares uh, in the Bitcoin Grayscale, I'm sorry, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust being unlocked. Now, one thing that's really important that we must pay attention to is that most of the people who were um, investing, oh, here we go. Here's the um, the actual picture that shows the uh, assets under management for Grayscale. Uh, let me pull that up real quick so we can get a, a much better look at it. All right. I wanted to make sure I had that there. So currently they have somewhere to the tune of like uh, 20, what was it? 23 billion, uh, 29.4 billion assets under management. And it's broken down here on this chart. So you can see they have, this is their crypto um, investment funds. And if you notice the bulk of their holdings is in Bitcoin. Uh, currently, what's that, $21.9 billion uh, in their Bitcoin trust? That's a lot of Bitcoin, man. Now, the way it's set up is that, as we go back to uh, the article here, the way it's set up is that the trust um, at the time was one of the only ways for uh, regulated investors in the U.S. to gain exposure to Bitcoin to the crypto, to crypto market. Now, what they did was, like I said, they introduced a lockup period of six months, in which case, you know, you kind of the high net worth individuals and institutions were able to uh, go into invest into the fund. Now, it introduced an arbitrage opportunity, as you can see here uh, from the article. It says this creates an arbitrage opportunity and changes market dynamics. And it's no small amount you know, we're talking millions of dollars uh, in arbitrage. If you guys don't understand what an arbitrage trade is, it's basically where you can uh, purchase, um, we'll, we'll use Bitcoin for an example because this is our focus uh, of conversation right now, uh, the main point of our focus. Um, you can purchase Bitcoin from one place and if it's being sold at another exchange or another location for a different price, um, you can say you buy it here for 20,000. It's being sold over here for 25,000. <laughs> you can actually um, sell your, uh, the, the Bitcoin you purchased for 20,000 over uh, to the, the place for 25,000 and pocket the difference. So that's kind of how that works in an arbitrage trade. Well, Grayscale was offering a premium. They were actually giving their, their clients the opportunity to take advantage of that arbitrage trade. So in essence, um, when 
if you got in at a certain price uh, at that premium locked in, um, by the time your lockup period ended, and you know, you could literally um, sell your shares back into the retail market and pocket the difference. So uh, it produced a huge opportunity, which is why um, it could have led to the reasoning behind the fact that we saw all the dips because there's actually correlation uh, between um, the grayscale lockup periods, unlock periods, and dips in the Bitcoin's price. Now, one thing, and the reason, and one thing I say, and the reason why I say that this could have an impact on the entire market. So it doesn't matter if you are a, a investor in Bitcoin, if you're an investor in any of the other alts coins. You know, we all know that where Bitcoin goes, the entire market goes. Bitcoin goes down five percent. The entire market goes down 10, 20, 30 percent, depending on the coin that you're investing in. So this is really important information to know because it can help you, especially if you're a trader. Um, but even as an investor, it can help you kind of plan, you know, your, uh, positioning moving forward, especially if, you know, you have advanced information, most of the time we're not privy to, and it can present an opportunity for you as well. You know, say you're in, and again, not financial advice. I'm just giving examples here. Uh, but say, you know, you're right now, Bitcoin is currently at 34.8 or 34, right at 34,000. So um, say you have your Bitcoin at 34,000, you're in profit, you have information of it potentially, you know, very reliable information of it potentially dropping nine, $10,000, you know, over the course of a week um, to two weeks. Well, what you could do, and again, not financial advice, um, just giving examples here, you could, you know, cash out of your your holdings, uh, move that over into a stable coin, you know, USDC or Tether, something to that effect, and just wait, wait for that opportunity to take place or wait for that event to happen. And then when it does happen, granted, you know, you're not going to time the bottom perfectly, but say a dip does take place, you can utilize that money that you have moved over to a stable coin to increase your holdings and then you ride the way back up. So really good information to have. This is why I was, you know, really excited to bring this to you guys. Again, want to credit uh, Lark, um, Crypto Lark, which I'll show you guys his Twitter here, um, who brought this to everyone's attention. So as you can see, he posted on Twitter, um, what was this, uh, yesterday? Uh, okay, so yesterday evening, which would have been um, I found about it. I found out about it this morning, so that's right on time. But <clears throat> he's basically saying later in July, starting from the 13th, Graystale will begin to unlock around 41,000 Bitcoin um, worth of GBTC shares. Uh, but what does this actually mean, and why, and should you be worried? So he goes down the entire list, you know, giving examples of exactly what's going on here, um, and he kind of breaks it down. You know, he as he calls him, uh, Fund Master in Chief, uh, JP Morgan says that it will dump to around 25K. Now here's the thing, as we saw in the chart, there is an opportunity for it to dump to the 25K range because, you know, on the monthly time frame, it has to feel that, you know, it needs to recover this vector candle. You know, again, I'm speaking uh, a whole different language. The traders, most experienced traders know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but it's really important for the market maker to, you know, recover the liquidity because there are orders that are out there around this price range. You want to fill those orders. And at that point, it could definitely, you know, it's not like it's going to be a complete crash. You feel this order, you recover this candle. As you can see, we're recovering candles left and right. Like that's almost to the T uh, where that candle was recovered. Scary, very scary. But uh, it's recovering candles, wicking down, you know, um, and bouncing back higher. Again, this is on the monthly time frame. I don't want to get too deep into it, but um, there's a lot of examples of candles being recovered, you know, as we look at 
um, the charts here. You know, I just switched over to the hourly. Anyway, again, not to stray too far off. You guys know I like to go down rabbit holes. Everything we do is live here. So um, <laughs> once I segue off and go down a rabbit hole, loop me back in. Very be be starting to loop me back in. So um, another thing that uh, we can talk about. So it's not all going to happen. Uh, the unlock. It's not all going to happen on a specific, on in one day. It's not all going to happen at one time. That's why we have a range. You know, beginning the July thirteenth, going all the way to July nineteenth. We can we'll see a range. Uh, as we can see here from this photo, which is uh, something that Bybit tracks, um, it says July 19th, we'll see the biggest single unlocking day with 16,000 uh, BTC being released. Now, not guaranteed to have a sell off, but one thing that we need to um, pay very close attention to is that the price of Bitcoin when this period took place um these guys most of these guys aren't in profit when they you know and a lot of uh i'll, I'll actually uh, i'll reference lark here because it's very important that i get this correct now one thing that lark um mentions in his explanations there uh, in the tweet is that <clears throat> these guys they're not in profit so what do you do uh, when you're not in profit, especially the way this works is they took out loans to acquire more Bitcoin because, again, at the time, there was a huge premium. A lot of people was making money leading up to this year. You know, again, we saw the huge blow up. We saw the huge top, 64000 We're back down. Well, at the time that uh, this premium period, uh, this, you know, uh, yeah, the premium period uh, took place, Bitcoin was around the amount that it is now. Uh, if not, um, if, if it's not actually lower now than it was uh, during the time of the, the lockup. Let's see, let's look at the chart. There's always an opportunity to take a look, to go back in time. Let's see, where was that? That was around January. Jesus Christ, I got a long way to go. Oh, here we go. All right, so... Looking at January 18th. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so the prices was were actually higher. Uh, I'll show you guys what I'm, what I'm looking at here. So we go to January 18th. January 18th, January 19th. Just looking at uh, January 13th. So the price was trading around 35000 you know, 35000 36000 So... Uh, depending on where they bought in at, they're actually in the negative right now. Now, now think about it this way. Say you took out a loan, you know, um, you use the money from that loan to invest into, we'll say this particular share. Now that, that loan, you're expecting a huge return. You're expecting, you know, the same numbers that say we in uh, Bitcoin was back in October, you know, uh, September range when it was trading around, you know, ten, twelve thousand um, dollars. You're expecting those types of returns. You're expecting the asset to double uh, as far as its value by the time you your lockup period is over. Well, what happens when the asset has actually gone down in value, and you're still accountable for that loan? You're still responsible for that loan, and you have to be responsible for the interest. This is where it's getting very interesting. So institutions don't like to lose money. And one thing that they always, that I've always heard and has proven to be true is that retail investors, when we miss the boat, we miss the boat. With institutions, when they miss the boat, they find a way to bring the boat back. In this particular situation, what the institutions can do, which again kind of plays into the whole price dump situation is that they could manipulate the price, which we know the crypto market is heavily manipulated because it hasn't, you know, it doesn't have the level of uh, regulation that the standard stock market has. And they can manipulate the price down to that 25K range while they have shorts in. So, you know, um, say I am in the whole 10 grand 
you know, and I've invested $50 million and I'm in the whole 10 grand per Bitcoin. Okay. In order for me to recoup that money plus make a profit, what I can do is I can go ahead and place a short order. I can place in, you know, put in a trade to say I'm going to short the price of Bitcoin, you know, is currently trading at 34,000. I'm going to short it from 34,000 down to 25,000. I'm going to make my money back and some, especially if you do a leverage trade. So it gives, it, it, it kind of adds to the potential. Again, these are all probabilities. So it kind of increases the probability of the price dump actually taking place. Now, we could be getting this news um, as a way to, I want to say like a diversion, uh, as to say, well, the price d dumped because of the fact that, you know, all these um, shares were unlocked and due to the unlock, you know, um, they just sold off. But here's the thing, for every seller, there has to be a buyer. When people sell, there has to be someone on the other end buying it. There has to be, you know, liquidity in order in the market in order for these orders to take place. Otherwise, you end up in a situation like with Vitalik when he uh, liquidated the pools for Shiba Inu. You know, he can only liquidate so much. You know, I think it was like over one billion that he was able to liquidate, uh, and the rest he eventually donated some and he had to burn the rest because the market wasn't liquid but he tried to drain all the liquidity pools uh, to cash in all the dollars possible again for every buyer there has to be a seller so you know in this particular situation bitcoin is highly liquid it's almost a trillion dollar asset well it was a trillion dollar asset at one point you know and now i think the market cap is around where are we like four or five hundred billion so in that area don't quote me on that. I'm not looking directly at it. So I'm trying to find it, but I don't want to waste time pulling it up. Anyway, uh, highly liquid market. So you can, you know, make those types of um, manipulative moves and literally not crash the market. This is kind of what I'm getting at. So say, going back to my initial statement where um, you can put in, you can literally uh, start building your shorts you know, drive the price down, fill those orders, and then let the price shoot back up. Everybody's happy, except for us, you know, <laughs> the guys who are buying in at 34000 But overall, looking on the long-term perspective, you know, um, it's trending upwards. So as we always say, when it out, zoom out. But this is this does present an opportunity to kind of do what the the big boys are doing, you know, which is again why i want to bring you guys this information and there's nothing certain nothing's guaranteed but there's a high probability of this actually playing out so uh, definitely wanted to bring that to you guys' attention and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna make this a this one a long session uh because again this is kind of you know breaking news per se uh, and I just wanted to make you guys aware of the fact that if you are a, currently a uh, crypto investor as a whole, because again, where Bitcoin goes, the market goes, you know, be very, very, keep your eyes open, be very, very um, conscious of the events that could take place next week. Um, I'll, I'll say it that way. I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes open and, you know, preparing for um, the drop if the drop happens and i'll be preparing for the rise if the rise happens you know if the drop happens we'll be we'll have our short orders ready if the rise happens, we'll have our loans ready you know there could be potential fake outs so definitely pay attention to that look at the volume you know understand you know exactly where the the pressure up or down is coming from because it could you know you could get trapped either way you know it could be a fake to the upside to trap you know um the bulls thinking that the market's about to go up so people are placing longs wipe their loans out, you know, hit their stops and it drops and it could be vice versa. So, you know, pay attention, make sure you get your confirmation for all your traders uh, before you make any serious moves. And uh, I'm, I'm wishing you guys the best. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Oh, they, they took my map away. Oh, look at that. Sorry. Uh, I was back over looking at our current hurricane status because again we're, we're we're having a hurricane a crypto hurricane party like i said 
I wasn't going to stop the show this time because this is something that's very important and it can help you guys prepare for um, the events that are taking place next week. And it would kind of suck for me to do Crypto Talk Tuesday next Tuesday and everything's happening on Tuesday. So I wanted to give you guys much as much advance notice as I possibly have because as I always say, you know, once I get the information I share with you guys, whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent, with you know, only time can tell, you know, and say hindsight is twenty twenty, but foresight is great. So um, be prepared for all put, uh, potential scenarios. Be prepared for all possible situations. And we're going to go ahead and uh, continue to be prepared for, it, it, it's, it's a hurricane. I think it's weakened a lot. You know, it's not, as, as you can see on the map here, it's not as strong as, you know, it was looking uh, now that it's kind of making landfall. Um, so you guys be safe out there. And like I said, I, I didn't want to keep you too long. I know I normally uh, do these videos for about an hour plus, but um, we're not, we're going to go in. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my hurricane evening, go cuddle up with the missus and <sighs> that's about it. So, uh, and as I always leave you guys in the words of uh, Russell Simmons from Def Comedy Jam, thank you for coming out. God bless you. Good night.